So we've got a lot of updates from Aptera this week. It has been a pretty interesting week for Aptera, and we've got quick a list of things to talk about. Just two days ago, we got a glimpse of Aptera's rear view screen and how the car's 180 degree view is achieved. We've also seen quite some activity on the Aptera Accelerator program and the push for funding for production. And then there's the biggest of it all. We may very well be looking at production as early as January 2024. That's the content of today's video, so don't go anywhere. Hello and thanks for tuning in. Before we go any further, please take a moment to support us by liking this video. Subscribe and activate the bell notification feature so you always know when we put out new videos. And remember, sharing is caring. Okay, let's get back to it. Let's start off by checking out the rear view screen that Aptera has set up and how that gives us a 180 degree rear view of the back of the Aptera. And this is awesome news. So this is the rear view screen of the Aptera and as you can see, it shows you exactly what's behind you and you get a really good view of the car's rear. No doubt this image that you're receiving is high definition so you can clearly get a view of what's behind you while driving the Aptera. But there's also something else that they do. That is, when you put the vehicle in reverse, here you can see the lines that's directing where your vehicle is so that you don't hit anything on both sides. But then they actually give you a split camera because they have two cameras that actually face the back of the vehicle, so you can see what's going on. This image on the left side of the rear view screen gives you a view of the back bumper lower area. Though this image doesn't really show you what's on the side of you as you sit in the car, but I've got to say the idea of the split view screen is simply genius. Let me know what you think of this split view in the comments section below. Now another interesting feature that makes the 180 degree view update even cooler is that it couples with your side mirrors. If you've noticed the Aptera has two side mirrors that serve as cameras, and this is where you get your 180 degree view from. The image on the right here is from the right side camera on the car, and this image on the left is from the left side of the car. Now, if you remember from models leading up to the Gamma, there was a lot of talk about the side mirrors. Specifically, Steve and Chris were considering to opt out of these side mirrors to maintain the aesthetic and aerodynamics of the Aptera, but they had to comply with auto regulations in place which requires all vehicles to have these mirrors. But an apparent Aptera isn't going to be relying on side mirrors for driving. No, they went ahead and still installed cameras anyways, which I think does a better job than the side mirrors they got on. Replacing the regular old side mirrors with cameras has been one of the latest trends in modern car design. Mirror cameras main advantage is well known due to aggressive marketing. Because cameras are more compact than standard mirrors, they provide better aerodynamics and reduced wind noise. This means improved efficiency and increased vehicle range. Mirrors also have a key disadvantage in that they reflect light that is already reflecting off existing objects. Because the light must travel from the object to the mirror and then to the driver, their eyes remain fixed on a distant object. Any other existing vision impairments, myopia, hyperopia, or otherwise, apply in the same way. A camera, on the other hand, sends images to a display, which is the item to focus on and is considerably closer. Even if a driver is wearing bifocals or progressive lenses, fast focus changes are difficult for the eye, especially at night, because the upper section of bifocals is designed for viewing distant objects rather than close objects. A similar difficulty arises when rearview mirrors are replaced by screens. No matter how strong the driver's glasses are, they cannot accept the quick focus change required because this is due to our eyes, not the glasses. The rear view mirror is located directly between the short focus distance required for viewing the instrument cluster and the long focus distance required for viewing the road. When we gaze into a traditional rear view mirror, the focus distance is the same as when we look forward. However, when we look at the screen type rear view mirror, our eyes must adjust to a different focal distance, which can be difficult for drivers who wear bifocal glasses because neither of their lenses will help focus their eyesight. Another advantage is that cameras eliminate blind spots since their wide-angle lenses provide a far clearer view of the road ahead. Blind spots are perhaps the most dangerous aspect of side mirrors, thus we applaud any approach that helps with that. You can see that usually with a normal car, you have a blind spot usually from like the center of the screen to the edge. You can't see anything in that area depending on how you adjust your mirror. The same on this side from about the center to the edge. But now, as you can see with the wide angle of the camera that you can see all the way over to this part of your vehicle. Once the car gets up into this area, if you look to your left, then you'll be able to see the car out your window. 
the same on this side. That coupled with the rear view camera gives you 180 degree view so you can really see what's going on all the way around you. You don't have to glance all around to see if someone is in your blind spot or not because this configuration eliminates any usual blind spot. It's quite amazing how they came up with this. And at this rate, you wouldn't even need the side mirrors sooner or later. This is what it looked like in the air and video with your side mirror cameras right here, straight in front of the driver with your rear view camera directly above you. As you can see, it's just a wonderful way they have it set up. And to make things even more amazing, Aptera threw in low latency screens in their build. You'll never again be blinded by someone's extremely bright lights behind you. That's also fantastic. You can reduce your camera's latency. I'm sure it works with all cameras. So when someone comes up behind you with really bright lights, which a lot of modern cars have, you can lessen the latency. That's fantastic in my opinion. Let's talk a little bit more about these low latency screens. Latency is defined as a delay in the time it takes for information to travel from one location to another. This translates into the time between taking an image and transferring it to the end user screen via video streaming. Latency streaming is measured in time units and it is well known that the higher the latency, the more fragmented the video streaming experience owing to disruptive delays. When it comes to embedded cameras, significant latency can lead to system failure, especially for autonomous vehicles that rely on collected image and video data to make choices. Latency has evolved into a competitive difference for embedded vision applications. Low latency camera streaming assures that there are only little lags, if any, when taking, sharing, and receiving imaging data. While there are no guidelines for defining the ideal low latency rate, there are widely accepted best practices. Low latency displays are truly the future of visibility. Never again will you be blinded by someone's extremely bright lights behind you. Okay, let's move on to the next big news of the week. Let's see just how far the Aptera Accelerator program is going. As we enter day 330 of the Aptera Accelerator program, the rate at which new investors are enrolling in the program continues to grow at an exceptionally rapid pace. At the present rate of approximately 5.1 investors per day, the program will be over in approximately 60 days. This is before Aptera has rolled out the official and more exact production timeline of Aptera, which might potentially take place in January 2024, resulting in an even quicker intake of new investors. This indicates that there is no longer any risk that Aptera Motors will be required to postpone the beginning of production and delivery due to the accelerator program not being closed. This is because the threat has been eliminated. It is also possible that the program will be expanded to include more than 2,000 investors that are already participating. In my opinion, it appears like it would be a good option for Aptera Motors as an alternative to launch into an initial public offering IPO which is something that they really do not want to do before production has begun. However, I do not have any inside information that this is going to take place. There is also the possibility that after the maximum number of 2,000 investors has been reached, new investments will still be permitted to take place by existing investors who are already participating in the program. This would mean that there would be a competition for position within the list, which would allow those who have more money to invest to move up the list. Both Aptera and those who are ready to accept the risk of investing in additional shares would benefit from this. Aptera would benefit significantly. Of course, this is mere speculation and I'm eager to hear your thoughts on this in the comments. Aptera is getting ready to begin production, but thanks to the new promotion that allows you to take $1,000 off the price of the vehicle, if you invest $2,000 in the program, they are getting ready to begin production. However, they are still looking for a large-scale investment from an institutional investor or a significant grant to start full-scale production. Aptera's total raise from crowdfunding is now just over $28.22 million between the Republic app and the Accelerator program. This represents an increase of more than $1.34 million from the previous week. A total of $1,572,794 was reported to have been raised by Republic, which is an increase from the previous week's total of $8,736. With the addition of six additional investors, Republic now has a total of 1,399 investors. This last week was another incredible one for the Accelerator program. Last week, Aptera received investments amounting to a total of $1,000,000. $328,693.
Consequently, week 47 is the sixth best week in the Accelerator program with this result. The Accelerator program of Aptera has now raised more than $26 million and is on its way to reaching $30 million as the total amount invested is now over $27.64 million. Aptera has also accomplished a number of significant milestones on the path to manufacturing. The Aptera bodies have all of their tooling completed and are ready for use. For the first 16 production intent builds, parts have been manufactured and validated, and there has been dimensional validation performed. To add insult to injury, we are going to witness those vehicles come together and starting their testing in a short while. In order to conduct crash tests and for marketing purposes, five of them are going to be made. Additionally, calibrating the airbags for collisions, calibrating the brakes and the levels of regeneration, and performing all of the other kinds of fine-tuning tasks that are required when developing a new vehicle are all things that will be done. More on this in the next video. Can't wait to dwell on this some more. And that concludes today's video. Do let us know what you think about today's discussion in the comments section below. And you can support this channel by liking this video. Subscribe and activate the bell notification feature so you'd always know when we put out new content. And remember, sharing is caring. Take care.